Oh my goodness, look what has landed on my front porch. It is none other than Scrap Iron and his anti armor drone. Man, they are just dishing it out today, man. It's just like, I hope I have enough memory card for, for all these videos that I've been recording. It's getting kind of redonkulous here. Um, so, I was not a big uh, Scrap Iron fan in terms of the uh, three and a quarter. I know it was like hugely popular back then, but I, just, I didn't have this figure. Um, my stepbrother did. And it is a good chance that I acquired this later on from him. Now I just want to bear in mind that by that point I didn't have the drone, it was just the figure. And what I basically did is that after losing all their accessories, I just used my imagination and any character who had a helmet was basically a space knight. You know, like from ROM Space Knight, they all were space knights and they could like shoot blasts from their hands and could fly independent of any other accessories. So uh, that's kind of what I did. So now, uh, when they released this one, it was just too frickin' cool not to just get. And, and I'm shocked he's not sold out. I mean, it's nuts. Um, anyway, I ended up getting two, believe it or not. One to keep, just because that's how much I liked him. But I am beyond eager to get this dude out of the box. So let's do this! Mr. Boom, bullet holes in my chest. Arrgh. Man, so here he is out of the box, and man, what a box. It is just. Now, it was the heaviest uh, box I've ever picked up from G.I. Joe, and that includes Serpentor. So it's a heavy box. It's filled with a lot of stuff. And I have to admit, this is bad A. Like, I know with some of the other uh, boxes that, you know, you get like a sliver of the art. This is basically the entire art. I think I'm just going to have to, you know, I wasn't a kind of uh, overzealous, so I damaged the box a little bit, but I think I'm keeping that. I think I'm going to post that on the wall because that's just too cool. Um, anyway, that's not what you're here for. <laughs> so let's have a look, see, shall we? This is always such a difficult task with the lightings, but we will try our best. All right, switching to manual computer. Luke, you turn off your opera. No, I'm um, sorry, we weren't going there. Uh, all right, so here he is. Burnt up face. He got the burnt up face. He's looking mean. He's got scars on his head and his face. The details are just amazing. Just amazing. This is, in my estimation, a complete and total return to greatness if if uh, his articulation holds up. And of speaking of which, let's see. Yeah, a little rough around the edges, but not too bad. He's not falling apart. A little stiff knee there, but you know, not bad. I, I, can, uh, I can work with that. He's got them crickety knees. But uh, so far, yeah, I, I dig the uh, articulation. I can't look up all that much. But then, you know, he's probably been looking down most of his life. I so sad. Um, but yeah, he's just got a lot of detail, man. I love that burnt up face. It's like almost, a, you know, Dr. Doom <laughs> kind of a... But yeah, the paint apps are clean, face clean. Everything looks clean. Now, one thing uh, that somebody pointed out, and I'm going to, uh, when I get to my, I am gonna do some comparisons because his color scheme is perfect in that, oops. Done lost my mark. That was done. Uh, repeating. So his color scheme uh, is brilliant in that it borrows colors from both releases of the Viper, the three pack and the uh, the whatever island version. But hey, let's take a look at his unprecedented number of accessories. Starting with the device, shall we? Okay, so it comes in dose pieces. Let me get to a, a better um, focus here. 
Uh, I think that's reasonable. I can't really tell. I'm going to switch to automatic and see if that helps. We'll see if it does, though. Okay, so it comes in two parts, right? The top and the wheels and the treads, of course, everyone knows by now. They don't move, but um, they're independent little walkies with the central point. This thing has like, uh, <laughs> just every time I saw this, I was like, this is like a uh, uh, 1960s retro back end of like, you know, a Chevy or something. <laughs> No, just kidding. Uh, and this looks like he's nice and smart. But uh, you got a peg hole, you got this going on, and then boom. It's simple as that, yo. Easy construction, yeah. It's like a happy little droid. Such a, such a happy droid. Anyway, uh, Piezo Electric. Now, um, in my uh, training uh, in electronics, piezoelectricity is a form of conductivity generally found in materials that are not directly elect uh, con conductive, like, you know, silver or um, copper and things like that. But what it is is semiconductive, like, say, a crystal is a piezoelectric material. So I found that interesting that they use that term uh, anti-tank ant tank that's right this tank is an ant tank so ants drive it and ants control the world do, 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 do. Uh, anyway <laughs> so you get uh, explosions lots of nifty explosions with kind of a half fast paint job here this overspray but I'll forgive it so it's a flat explosion you get the sweeping explosion which I don't truly understand um, very imaginative it's like a foaming bubble tea I guess I got a missing little scrap there um, these are the blasts uh, varying lengths not too bad and they're compatible with a bazooka and then you get the direct impact explosions with the swirl actually quite well done i can't even begin to imagine how how this comes out of a mold because i can't it, it doesn't look like it's glued on it looks like it's one piece uh, that's brilliant really um and here's the other one now everybody i've seen has usually got a significant curve on this but this one's not too bad so short and big blasts all right um Nifty little helmet with the shininess. I get the shininess. Uh, I'm going to switch to manual because this is close up stuff again. Boom. Let's see if I get, make sure. I don't want to be totes out of focus this whole time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With a kind of an interesting cobra symbol. Not really, not, you know. It's not vintage. Well, it is vintage, but meaning that it's not the traditional cobra symbol. That one was used to. Oh, that's right. You get the measles. Gigantic rubbery measles. They're actually not that rubbery. Seems like a lot of people made it seem like they were going to be super rubbery, but laser guided because, you know, you need your enemy to know they're laser guided before they blow you up. <laughs> I've always just been amazed at that kind of stuff. Is that... Really how military ordnance is, uh, you know, just, we need to make sure. Because if these are laser guided, what are the other options? Non-laser guided? Duds? You know, anyway. Uh, somebody had once mentioned that this was a very specific style of uh, sidearm that was relatively new. Uh, meaning, like, in real world. But I don't remember its name. And it is interesting, it has a rail system on the top of the sidearm what you could <laughs> I don't know what you would put on that rail a scope uh, God only knows how it is to be augmented then you get his uh, PSP <laughs> I know a lot of people are like yeah, it's my own video game system it's got this cool um, sticker or applique that in certain lights obviously you can't tell it's anything but if you get it in a certain light you'll see it has uh, various designs it's got little controls. Um, these do not move because if you move them too much, they's going to break. So 
Let's see. First of all, let's put a nice lovely hat on his boint face. Mmm, shpwamp. Get that lined up a little better. That's, That's right. right. Now he's evil. Yeah. Don't That's mess with me. I will mess up your physiology, bro. And then his lovely sidearm goes in its lovely pouch like so. And I'm probably guaranteeing he'll never use it. Why should I when I've got great big explosives at my grasps? There he goes. I'm off to play video games. Isn't that what you would do? <laughs> All right. Now, uh, he is about as loaded out as he gonna get. Um, with this, it's pretty simple. You just simply place, and there it is. Isn't that fun and exciting? Then you get the explosion, and it just pegs in toward the back, and then you put this. Voila! Now, a lot of people were saying that it's heavy and that it will cause it to slowly tilt down, but mine's not having that issue. So, yay me, I guess. Pretty cool stuff. Now, um, the comparison I wish to make. So, give me a moment while I clear space, okay? Okay. All right, so here we have both the versions of the Viper standing next to him. And I just, like I said, just want to point out that um, the color schemes match up perfectly. And by that, I mean there's bright red on his uh, jacket or bulletproof vest or whatever that matches the same bright red that's on the Viper. And his dull, kind of a dull red color matches the dull red color on the uh, three pack viper and then the blues the muted blues are close enough hue to the rest of the muted blues that the other vipers have so it's almost like he was meant to command or be a part of the standard viper team which i think is quite a fantastic um, but then i wondered out loud since no one else had made the comparison like how does he compare to say regular troopers still matches up same kind of uh, bluish bluish hue uh even if you were to put say a viper officer uh next to him it's the same exact uh whatever this dull burgundyish red is so he really does match up well to the troopers i mean you put him in a crowd you may not be able to spot him out <laughs> right i say that's pretty darn cool i think that is just very good design work on their part even right down to the black grenades you know just just perfect absolutely perfect i couldn't be happier with this figure i if you have not picked him up then you're just not collecting gi joe classified <laughs> i guess because he's still available and he is definitely one of the better releases that i've seen in a long while and by the time I release this versus the other uh, videos that I have coming, if I ever do get them out, uh, you'll know that I've not been as excited about those as I am about this. Okay. So with that said, we sub being on with the photos. Cause you I mean, you know, I, I said this before in another video, I just don't know if you're all that interested in comparisons to other toy lines with these. I don't know if that's a thing that you're going to do, but I just felt like it eats up too much time. Uh, but you know what? Let me know in the comments if it's like, you know, hey, bring back the comparison, Joe. What's wrong with you? <laughs> anyway, on with the photos. Oh, uh, just real quick. I wanted to point out that I have these little tiny lights. Uh, they're terrible, but um, they're just these little, uh, I don't know what you want to call them. They're just little LED lights, but if you put one under it, it glows. Isn't that cool? Unfortunately, that's the only one that it really fits into, you know what I mean? Because it's it's how big it is. But like, um, if I try to put it on the other ones, I mean, it looks cool, but you're going to really need to put uh, something under it. But something to think about putting LEDs under these to make them really, you know, stand out. You know, explosion! <laughs> Oh, and one last thing, in case you were wondering about uh, Bazooka and the compatibility of the Blast FX. Dun, 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 dun. It's kind of ridiculous, but <laughs> there it is. 
Yeah, I tried adding like, you know, the other blast effects to see if they'd fit and the pegs are too small. Uh, the hole is only just able to fit those. But I thought I'd show you that absolute level of ridiculousness, but I love it at the same time. Compatibility, yo, it's where it's at.